All right. Uh, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the uh, OCN developer community call for um, September um, 2021. Yeah, excited after our summer hiatus to be back. So what we'd like to talk about today is um, that would be experience of folks connecting to the OCN. Um, and then just a recap of the OCN bridge and some ideas that uh, we at Energy Web have there. And, um, and then talking about some developments with regards to CPOs on the OCN. Um, on the call, we've got uh, myself, um, John, developer with Energy Web, and uh, Robert, uh, who's the product owner for uh, the Open Charging Network. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, so in general, we're looking to gather some feedback on what the OCN connection experience has been like to, um, to improve that for, for folks. Uh, not too many people to ask directly on the call, but if you have any feedback, definitely uh, give that to us. We're always looking to improve at the moment. Um, the prerequisites are having NOCPI 2.2 uh, backend, and then there's some configuration with the energy web chain where you need to register and set up a whitelist. There's ways of improving that or at least still working around some of those requirements, for instance, using the OCN bridge, more on that later. Um, but we're always looking to improve the experience. So uh, any feedback that you have, uh, definitely let us know. And actually from our OCN survey, um, a few months ago now, we did get some feedback that uh, folks are looking to, to help with the, the OCPI uh, integration side of, of your mobility. So the, um, that includes the yeah, connection to the OCN. So uh, we're definitely looking to improve that area. Yeah. Any thoughts on that, uh, Robert? Um, yeah, just maybe also to, to detail this a bit more. So of course, also for everybody who has not yet constituted the OCN, uh, we would also love to hear um, why not? Like, is, is there a technical reason? Um, what what's, uh, what could we do to make it easier for you to connect? And also in the test environment first, of course, but also later in production. That would be really interesting for us to understand. And for those of you who have already connected in the past, um, maybe you could also share your experience um, with us in the community to understand better maybe some tools, maybe some hints that you found helpful in your experience. Yeah, definitely. Um, feel free to send us an email or reach out on Slack, um, any channel that uh, works best for you. With that, maybe I'll move it to talking about the OCN bridge, uh, like I, I talked about. Uh, we had a, a more in-depth uh, look into the OCN bridge and the OCN 2.1.1 uh, bridge a few months ago. But just to recap, uh, the OCN bridge and the OCN 2.1.1 bridge are components that already exist. They're open source and available. The OCN bridge provides some TypeScript interfaces to allow an existing back office API to plug in, as it were, to the OCN. So by implementing these interfaces, uh, the OCN bridge can handle the uh, OCN communication with the node with the OCN node. And then the OCN 2.1.1 bridge is an implementation of the OCN bridge interface so that uh, rather than implementing the TypeScript interface, it acts as that uh, proxy server between an existing 2.1.1 backend and the OCN. Uh, so it, it allows existing 2.1.1 backends to use the OCN without necessarily requiring the 2.2 functionality. Um, and although because of that, there's some limitations, um, it's only possible to, uh, to respond. It's not possible to make an OCPII request uh, using the 2.1.1 bridge. But still, um, we talked in the previous discussion, there's, there's the potential of, of uh, working around that, perhaps using the token B. Um, as a way of, uh, of addressing requests. So 
um, that's the current state, but it, it would be possible to improve the 2.1.1 bridge as well. Um, anything to add on that front, uh, Robert? No, I think not, not much to add here. Um, so this is just, yeah, just a recap of what is already out there, what's already existing. Um, and just, yes, everyone is already up to date then for the next slide. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, maybe in fact, I'll, if it's all right, I'll let you uh, lead this, this piece off here. I think this is an idea that uh, you've been incubating, I'd say this OCN gateway, uh, 2.2, 2.2 bridge. Exactly. So um, yeah, of course, like still like a, a working title of this, and our goal with this was to make it easier for everybody to connect and get started with the OCM, um, especially lowering the technical requirements, technical knowledge that would be required for someone to connect to the OCM, um, given they already have the OCPI 2.2 implemented in the existing backend. So making it a more traditional um, backend and then providing all the additional tasks like the signing and the Ethereum keys that would be required to actually interact with the LCN node as a, as a bridge or as a gateway service that we can host for free for joint projects. So if you want to work with this, and you want to do a joint project with Energy Web, or you're planning to do a, a demo or just understand how the OCN works um, in, in real life, then this would be a, a way to get started and with really minimal effort connect to this gateway. And it would then uh, for you take care of the key generation, the messaging and the signing. And of course, this would pose uh, security problem in the production environment. That's why we see this mainly as a starting point for demos for POCs. But uh, going further, we of course always encourage people to host their own nodes, definitely keep your own keys. Um, so that's why I also Mark made this remark here for demo purposes um, in order to get started for so like a low friction first step, especially for demos and POCs with little to none to no technical resources. This would be like our idea and we would really like to hear your feedback if this is something that you could use inside your own company to maybe roll out the OCN to understand the benefit of the OCN better if you could already use it with a simple web interface and just changing the, the endpoint URL. Yeah, thanks. That, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting idea. So it's a 2.2 the 2.2 bridge. Um, so we would have this gateway acting as an OCPI 2.2 connection to the OCN node. And then I'm understanding that there would be an OCPI connection between the party that we want to connect and our gateways. So is that right? There would be an OCPI connection there as well. Um, so the way I'm thinking about it right now is that this that this gateway would connect to an existing OCN node, and then this node right. would connect to the other node of the other participant. Um, right. So yeah. then from the back end, from any participant, it mm -hmm. looks similar to um, the OCN gateway doesn't exist, so it becomes transparent, basically. Yeah. Um, so you're talking to the gateway, but you're actually sending messages to the remote party and the whole network in between will just take care of signing the messages, also on the response message, actually verifying the signature. And then after the signature verification has been successful, delivering the corresponding LCPI message downstream to your backend. So inside your backend, you don't have to take care of signing, verification, and um, key storage. Right, yeah, that, that, uh, that makes sense. Um, just pause here for a sec to, uh, to welcome Florian, uh, welcome to the call, Florian. Uh, just to recap, Robert and I are discussing uh, a concept that uh, we're working with called the OCN uh, Gateway, which is um, in it, trying to reduce the, the startup cost for connecting to the OCN. So we're just uh, we're going over that. Uh, welcome. 
Yeah, welcome. Um, uh, yeah, I hope you can hear me. Hear me. Um, yeah, fine. Yes. Um, yeah, so I basically, yeah, I know quite something about OCPI um, and I heard about the OCN a lot, um, but yeah, I really don't know uh, what's the state of the project and uh, how one could start with it because I don't know what the OCN gateway uh, is. But uh, I heard about a tool yeah, to connect um, with OCPI to the OCN yeah, network. Um, is this uh, some kind of uh, tool for this direction or? Yeah, exactly. So and like already today, um, the OCN or each OCN node has an OCPI interface. Okay. Um, and this OCPI interface requires message signing. Um, however, in OCPI, in the vanilla sense, basically, um, signing is optional. But yes. uh, due to the distributed nature of the OCN, we decided to make signing mandatory. And here now the idea is with this added bridge or gateway that we would offer a software as a service where companies can send us their OCPI messages that they already have and already speak with their backend then this gateway would take care of signing and OCP verification and uh, signature verification, and then forward it to the already existing OCN node. Um, okay. Of course, this, is, this would be for demos, for POCs, uh, not for production use, um, but uh, we hope that this would lower the friction and also provide an easier entry point for new companies and people who are interested in the OCN. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, the technology, the chair in charge or the OCN uses is basically, I heard it's a blockchain approach. So, um, yeah, I, I wonder if it's uh, just, yeah, more buzzwording or is it uh, really like a public blockchain? Um, yeah, maybe you can say something about that. Sure, happy. Yeah, of course. Um, so yes, um, it's not just a buzzword, it's actually a public blockchain with a like, publicly traded token. Um, so it's using the energy web chain, um, which is a very energy efficient, low cost chain, which is just using the proof of authority or consensus algorithm. And the blockchain part of the open charging network is basically the address book, so to speak. So um, there is on chain a record of all the participants that have registered with the LCN. And you can use this address book to understand which public key you would need to use um, for your signing when then addressing the message to another party. So, um, so new users need to register in the address book, right? Exactly, exactly. When you first register, um, you basically need to make a smart contract call to register yourself in the on-chain address book. And in order to issue this contract call, you would need like a very small amount of tokens to pay for the gas fees. But of course, this also exists in the test network, which is called Volta, where everything is completely free. Okay. And yeah, is there any kind of authorization? Because yeah, you wouldn't want that everyone... Uh, yeah, says that he charged somewhere or just registers as a CPO and um, then charges something, but actually there's no connection to the real world, like a real charging infrastructure. So how do you solve this? Yes, so like in this peer-to-peer -peer approach or in this decentralized approach, everyone can register in the first place. So that's correct. Everyone um, can register with an MSP role or a CPO role. However, if there is an actual message being accepted from the sender, still depends on the receiving party. And that's something that the OCN offers in form of a whitelist. So you have to define each CPO and each MSP have their own whitelist on their own server. And in this, in this whitelist, you will enter the keys basically of the corresponding parties that you are agreeing to interact with. So this would probably need something just like the ancient GPG key signing parties where people would exchange keys by hand and uh, yeah, verify each other. 
it's it's actually similar to that with the uh, with the only added point that this address book is online. So basically, the key server is yeah. the one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and the chain is public, and so everybody could see uh, every transaction which is made, right? That's right. But that the transactions being actually only the registration, because the actual charging process, and this is the other part of the OCN, is an off-chain message. So whenever the companies have basically set up the trust relationship between CPO and MSP, what happens next? that there's an OCPI message being exchanged from one company to another. This is happening completely off chain and this is the routing algorithm of the OCN. So each company can have their own OCN node or if you want, you can also use someone else's OCN node for a fee. Um, there are companies that offer OCN nodes also as a service, for example. And then the OCN nodes will basically form an overlay network and then forward OCPI messages to this routing algorithm to the corresponding node to find the corresponding party that you want to roam with. Okay. So um, the basically the OCPI uh, message uh, exchange happens off chain, just uh, yeah, like you would normally do it without the OCN. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's also the idea here of this bridge. Uh, so maybe coming back to this, um, we want to wrap this whole story that basically involves the blockchain interaction, the keys and the signing into this bridge, into this gateway, because that's something that people may not be used to today. Um, so they can use, they can just send OCPI messages to this bridge, which will then take care of the um, retrieval of the key from the on-chain address book um then send the message and on the return message verify the signature and then also forward it to the downstream server speaking ocpi okay but uh, what exactly is um the feature set of the ocn um so it's registering new users it's verifying existing users um yeah it's this sounds basically like a like a public key uh, infrastructure so um yeah, there's probably quite more to it. Isn't it's, it? it's really mainly these two things. It's the PKI plus the messaging and routing algorithm. Okay, so routing uh, is managed on chain. Well, like the LCN nodes, they have an ident they have a identity. Um, but I think the, the algorithm, like the finding of the path, is really happening inside the LCN node and not recorded on chain like it's like a algorithm that just finds the path of the message okay yeah i i can add it's it's quite simple it's um it's a essentially proxies where the ocn node is um in the most uh remote case where there's two ocn nodes involved um the sending party will send the message to their OCN node. The OCN node will look up the OCN node of the recipient, send it to that second OCN node, and then the second OCN node proxies to the intended recipient, and then the response is just proxied back through that. So the, it, it is a network in the sense of connections between nodes and parties, uh, but there aren't like multiple, at, at most there's two nodes involved in, a, in an OCPI request response. The the hub um, yeah the hub part of the OCPI protocol is uh, covered um, for every uh, OCN node, right? Yeah, that's so, it, that's the, the key of what's being used is the OCPI yeah. hub functionality exactly. Okay, yeah. Okay, um, but there's no, no such uh, public history uh, with um, signed um, yeah energy exchange data. Or stuff like that. No. So yeah, one could yeah uh, think about it in a energy network. Uh, yeah, to use it for this too. But uh, okay, is there mm -hmm. any yeah uh, research going on in this direction? Uh, 
Yes, um, so maybe just a little bit of background. Um, so the, the OCN, the Open Charging Network, is now also part of the Energy Web Foundation's software stack. And as the Energy Web Foundation, we have exactly the kind of projects that I think you're, you're just uh, describing. So we are using the Open Charging Network as a base layer, and we can then also build and extend the Open Charging Network. So the Open Charging Network also exposes this uh, service interface. And this, through the service interface API, you can extend the Open Charging Network. And you can also access data that is otherwise only exchanged peer-to-peer. -peer. Of course, you need to be whitelisted for that. But once you're whitelisted, you can read all the data that the CPO or the MSP would receive. And then use this to build whatever third-party service, like a green charging, smart charging solution on top. Um, it's it, more information on this. Um, also, I'm, I'm happy to send you some more links uh, after the call by email. Um, yes. It's called the service interface. So if you go to docs.opencharge-network.org, yes. um, you will go to our wiki page. And there is also a description of the, of the service interface. Um, yeah, let me then de definitely send you the links um, afterwards. We can also put them in the notes on the, on the YouTube video for everybody else to see. Ah, uh, yes. So if you if you're opening the getting started uh, link on the wiki and then go to make use of the OCN service interface, uh, that's exactly where the where the description is. And we also have already some projects out there, basically being developed by Energy Web and some other energy companies. Uh, that make use of exactly this interface and then also offer, for example, a history of charging records or, um, yeah, we are currently working on green charging solutions. So if you're interested in any of these topics, I'm yeah, really happy to set up a call and um, walk you through some of the apps that are built on top of the LCN at the moment. Okay, yeah. Um, yes. Uh, you I, I'm, I would be very happy if you would send me uh, some more material and uh, then I will look into it if this is uh, quite that what uh, I have in mind. Sounds, sounds great. I think at the, at the last slide, we have our contact details. Um, so please yeah, reach out to us and then uh, we will get back to you very soon. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah we can of course send you the link uh, if you're able to see the screen. At the moment, I've just put up the, I think this is what you were yes. referring to, Robert. Um, okay. So there's some documentation here. There's uh, um, a medium post that goes through an example and the, the business use case for it. And then there's also a demo uh, where you can, you can set up um, the entire um, a service and also a, a CPO that's using that service. So. Okay. There's quite it's quite a bit quite a bit of information there. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm sorry that I uh, just crashed uh, the developer community call. No, no, no worries. Uh, that, that's good to to get your questions, of course. Um, so, also for everybody else who might watch the recording, if you have any follow up questions, you don't necessarily need to wait. Of course, you're always welcome to join the call. You can also send us a message in between. Um, and also, of course, to, to you, uh, the same applies as well. Like, please, yeah, feel free to reach out. And if you have any more questions, please, please address them. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, for now, it's okay. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Yeah, uh, thanks, Florian. Uh, thanks, Robert. Um, my last topic was um, recap of CPOs on the OCN um, with a spotlight on, on Llama. A, a new CPO that uh, is working on some projects with uh, with Energy Web uh, using the OCN. Um, perhaps I'll let you add some more uh, color to that, Robert. In addition to what's on the slide here, talking about uh, Llama's uh, current infrastructure. Sure. Yeah. Happy to. Um, yeah. So Llama is um, short for Laden am Arbeitsplatz. It's um, in um, yeah, company. It's a concept from the Fraunhofer Institutes across Germany. 
So it's very tightly linked um, also to research purposes. And they are offering these charge points mainly for their own um, for their own stuff. So they already have 310 AC charging points across Germany and their different locations. And they're going to roll out more charging points throughout also the next year. And we are really happy to welcome them on the OCN because they are already have implemented their OCPI 2.2 backend. They are already connected. And at the moment, there are three different charge points at two different locations that um, they are making available, especially for our innovative use cases and testing projects. So we are really happy that we are able to actually take them out of the production and use them especially for our use cases. And then the remaining charge points uh, will go live on the production OCN network early next year. And so if you are looking forward to test some of use, so your use cases with a real charge point uh, actually on the road, this is now possible going forward. And we are also hoping to get more CPOs to donate some of their available charge points for exactly these kind of innovative um, new projects. And of course, also connect more production use cases in the future. Great. Uh, yeah, thanks, Robert. That is exciting. Um, I think with that, then, uh, as Robert mentioned earlier, we've got uh, some links here to resources. We've got a Slack channel where uh, there's, there's discussion and questions regularly, uh, the uh, docs that we showed uh, quickly, and uh, we've got a next community call next month. So um, see you then, or um, possibly talk to you even even sooner. Um, any other thing you can add, uh, Robert or Florian, before we close it off? Uh, yeah, no, John. Is Everything's fine for me. me. Thanks. Okay, thanks. John, is there one last one more slide with the contact information? Um, I don't think there is beyond this, but uh, you, do you mean specific email addresses, uh, Robert? Or Yeah, then let me um, let me just put them here in the chat uh, for yeah. Florian. Maybe it's easier that way. Sure. And uh, otherwise, um, yeah, we can also make them available on the... On YouTube video, but also I think there's already the um, contact information on the website too. So, yeah. yeah, let me just put this one here. So, yeah, so this is my email address. Uh, Florian, I think you should have received it. Yes, yeah, I received it. Thanks. Awesome, great. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think then we are at the end of our call. Thanks for thanks for attending and yeah, looking forward to getting your feedback. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I will get back to you. Great. Uh, thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.